ladies and gentlemen, we have wrapped up 12 hours of doing the draft. I took a little break just to um, chill by myself before making this recap video. But this was a solid draft. And after looking at these players, we got some real value in this draft. It was really, really good. Uh, there were There's one questionable pick where I was like, hmm. Probably shouldn't have drafted that, but I think that this was a solid draft from George Payton yet again, and we will get into every pick, break it down, and um, yeah, I I'm super excited. As always, I want to remind you uh, that Jesus is king. I just pray that you give your life to him. He's got a plan and a purpose for you, and I just truly hope that you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and if you truly believe with your whole heart that he died on the cross for your sins, then you'll go to heaven. It's that simple. It's that easy. Of course, the decision is up to you, but I really do hope you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and I hope to see you in heaven. Um, now, also, I want to ask you to leave a like and subscribe as it helps the channel out. We're, uh, we're at like 316 subscribers, and, and let's see if we can't hit, uh, let's see wh when we can hit 400. I would like to try to hit 500 subs before the season starts, and if we could do that, that would be awesome. Now, with that being said, I, I'm also, by the way, I'm going to be showing what the lineup looks like with the rookies inserted that I think um, the rookies are going to look like. I'm looking at all the undrafted free agents. There's still more coming in, so we're going to make a video about that in a couple days once you know we sign off all, all of our undrafted free agents. But let's get into this. At 64, uh, we selected Nick Benito Edge out of Oklahoma, of course. We didn't have a first-round pick, ninth overall. We traded that to the Seahawks for Russell Wilson. And then our fourth or our second round pick, we traded that for the Seahawks for Russell Wilson as well. That was 40th overall. So our first pick in the draft came with Nick Benito Edra out of Oklahoma. Now, Nick Benito, as of right now, he adds a solid rotational edge piece to this Broncos defense. You know, with Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory, of course, being the two starting edge rushers. And then uh, he will be Malik, with Malik Willis kind of in that rotational spot. And honestly, he could be our starting edge rusher on one side next season, depending on what happens with Bradley Chubb. Hopefully he has a solid season and hopefully we bring him back. But if not, I would feel confident starting Nick Benito there. He has great speed and burst at the top of his rush route. And, you know, he uses his length to get to the quarterback, which is something, you know, very, very rare to see coming out of college. And, you know, Chris Sims had Nick Benito as a first round pick. Of course, he fell to the last pick in the second round where the Broncos scooped him up. I didn't have him as a first round pick, but I definitely thought he was a second round pick. So this is an absolute value pick by George Payton here. And during his time with the Sooners, he had 69 solo tackles with 49 assist tackles for a total of 118 tackles. He has 33 tackles for loss, 19 and a half sacks and one interception. And speaking of interception, something that he can do is he can drop back. Uh, he can drop back into coverage if, say, you want to disguise kind of a blitz, if Azure Evero wants to do that, he can have Nick Benito act like he's uh, he's going to rush off the ed uh, edge and then drop back into coverage and have a corner or a safety blitz. And, yeah, I uh, I think this is a very solid pick for the Broncos and Nick Benito. Of course, there are guys like Chad Muma there that I would want, N'Kobe Dean, but still, this is a great pick and you can't complain for the Broncos. At pick number 80, we selected Greg Dulcich, tight end out of UCLA. Now, of course, we traded down, acquiring a fifth-round pick, moving down five spots with the Texans, getting Dulcich, who is one of the more athletic tight ends in the draft. I would have to say Chikazima Konkwo would be a little bit more athletic, but Greg Dulcich is right there. And to me, was the third-best tight end in this draft behind uh, Trey McBride and Isaiah Likely. I think Dulcich is spectacular you know we're gonna use him like Fant and the two tight end sets sometimes we might have Dulcich over uh or sorry not Fant Albert Okuebanam um sometimes we'll use him over Albert Okuebanam uh I think this is a, a spectacular pick a Fant replacement um yeah maybe not as polished as Fant coming in but to me I thought Dulcich would be at least a second round pick he falls to us uh it to the mid to the mid to late uh, second round, and I think this is tremendous, tremendous value uh, at with Dulcich at uh, tight end. Now, uh, during his time with the UCLA Bruins, he had 77 receptions for 1,353 yards, averaging 17.6 yards per play and scoring 11 touchdowns. And also a fun fact is he was a walk-on at UCLA, and he had to work 
uh, for his spot to get a scholarship. So, you know, a true underdog story. Uh, George Payton also went to UCLA, I believe. So kind of a home hometown pick there. Um, and yeah, so I, I love this pick. Dulcich is the new tight end number two and could potentially be tight end number one, depending on Alberto Cuevanam's injuries and play on the field. So we'll have to see how that all works out uh, during training camp, mini camp, uh, OTAs, and when the season gets uh, underway. At pick number 115, we selected Damari Mathis, defensive back out of Pittsburgh. Now, why I say defensive back is to me, Damari Mathis can play either safety or corner. And if I had to say something, this would probably be my my favorite pick in the draft. Of course, I love Nick Benito. I love Greg Zolcich. But Damari Mathis was one of my guys who I wanted the Broncos to take, and we take him here at 115. The ability to play corner, the ability to play safety, that versatility is something you can't teach. And he's a hard hitter. He, hitter. He's going to play very physical. He's not afraid to hit. He's not afraid to come up and tackle. And Damari Mathis, to me, was extreme value. I thought, you know, this was around the range he was going to go, but I still think it is solid, solid value picking up Damari Mathis here in the fourth. And, um, you know, during his time with the Pittsburgh Panthers, he had 66 solo tackles, 20 assist tackles, 86 uh, or yeah, 20 assist tackles for 86 total tackles. He had four and a half tackles for loss, 18 passes defended, five interceptions, and one touchdown off the interceptions. And then, of course, we had back to back picks. And with pick 116, we selected Ioima Aruzawike, um, defensive end out of Iowa State. Now, I would have put edge rusher, but he's not going to be an edge rusher for us because he will play defensive end for us. And, and edge rushers for the Broncos and a 3 4 scheme. Those are the outside linebackers. So, uh, Ruzarike um, will be playing defensive end, and I see him competing for the starting. Um, uh, well, I can't remember what it is. It's either left or right defensive end with McTelvin Aguim for whoever is going to start opposite of Draymond Jones. I think it's right. No, I, I we'll get to it. We'll get to it later. But he will compete with McTelvin Aguim for the starting defensive end role. He is a very very good pass rusher coming out of Iowa State. He's also really going to help out in the run. At first, when I saw this pick, I don't know. I was a little bit, I was a little bit down. I was like, ah, I don't know if I would have done that. But then after looking into him more, I think this is a very solid pick for the Broncos. Adding someone who can not only affect the pass rush but also the run on the defensive line without being an edge rusher is very, very huge. And yeah, this is a great pick. Um, with the Cyclones, Aruzarike had 70 solo tackles with 76 assist tackles for a total of 146 tackles. He had 34 and a half tackles for loss and 15 sacks. Then in the fifth round, we actually had three fifth round picks, which were acquired from, um, well, we so we had the second pick in the fifth round, but we traded that, uh, or we got that pick from the Lions um, for trading Trinity Benson to them before last season started. Then we gave that pick to the Seahawks in exchange for um, Russell Wilson, and then the Seahawks gave that to the Chiefs, but that doesn't matter. Uh, but then we ended up with three fifth-round picks, um, um, for tr one for trading back uh, in the third round, um, the other for I – I can't remember. We, we just ended up with three. I, I, I'm trying to remember how we got three, but – we got three picks in the fifth round, which, you know, we put to use. The first one, pick 152, we selected DeLorean Turner Yell, safety out of Oklahoma. Now, to me, safety, uh, DeLorean Turner, he was more of an underrated safety in my my opinion. I really um, didn't see him going here uh, in the draft until the sixth round, maybe late fifth. So, I don't hate the value on uh, Turner Yell. Him and... Um, Nick Benito, actually, they were lifting partners in college, and Nick Benito said they're best friends. So, you know, he gets to come into the NFL with his best friend to the same team, you know. And DeLorean Turner uh, Yell is someone who is going to be effective in the uh, pass game. He's going to be able to drop into coverage, but he's also going to be able to affect the run, helping stop the run. You know, if you want to send him on a safety blitz, he's going to be able to get to the quarterback. So he's kind of a do-it-all safety out of Oklahoma. Uh, one of the more underrated guys in the draft and even underrated to me. Um, and after doing some tape study, you know, I I wish I did some more work on Turner Yale because he looks like a very, very solid prospect for the Broncos here and um, adding him to our safety room.
to learn under guys like Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, who bring veteran leadership to these young guys. And uh, during time during his time with the Sooners, uh, Turner Yell had 136 solo tackles with 54 assist tackles for a total of 190 tackles. He has 10 tackles for loss, half a sack, six passes defended, and four interceptions. Now, remember, stats aren't everything, but they're a nice kind of description of, of things they do well uh, without really looking into the film if you don't do that. Of course, I like looking into the film, but if you don't, they're kind of, I wouldn't say they're 100%, but they're kind of a nice way. At pick 162, we selected Montreal Washington wide receiver out of Samford, not Stanford, Samford. Now, if you were in my stream, you'll notice that I was a bit confused because I did expect us to take a return at some point in the draft. And, you know, I'm not mad at taking one here. Uh, I I probably would have taken one in the sixth, the seventh round. But if Montreal Washington is your guy, I don't think I said Washington. I think I said something else before. Uh, but if Montreal Washington is your guy, you you take him. You know, he's got a lot of speed, explosiveness, and explosiveness and burst. And wasn't on my radar coming into the draft. Obviously, he's coming from a smaller school at Samford. But Montreal Washington will be our starting returner with the speed, with the explosiveness. You know, he could play in the slot. But to me, I think he's going to be mostly utilized in that special teams role, being the returner. Um, for both punt and kick, maybe being a gunner on punt team and uh, kickoff. So I, I see him being that special teams type of role, maybe getting some snaps at receiver every once in a while, but mostly special teams. And during his time with the Rams, he had 129 receptions with one, for 1,728 yards, averaging 11.9 yards per play and scoring 16 touchdowns. And then with our fifth round pick, our final fifth round pick, we actually traded up with the Green Bay Packers, giving them um, our original third fifth round pick at the end of the fifth round. And we gave them pick 234. So our last pick in the draft in the seventh round, which, you know, moving up the amount of spots we did uh, and giving them a seventh round pick, I don't mind it because it's hard to turn a seventh rounder into nothing. So if essentially you're turning a, you know, a, a seventh round that maybe you, with you get a maybe prospect into someone who you know put, could potentially be a long-term impact in the fifth round and with that we selected Luke Wattenberg center out of Washington now to me there was still Kellen Desich on the the team which you know um that's the center right Kellen Desich uh he was the center from Arizona State yes Kellen Desich uh center out of Arizona State was still on the board. So personally, I probably would have gone for Kellen Desich from Arizona State if we were going to take a center. But, you know, Wattenberg isn't terrible at all. And what he's going to do is he's going to come in and he's going to provide instant competition to Lloyd Cushenberry. Of course, Cushenberry hasn't really been the best center since drafting him in the third round in 2020. So Wattenberg will provide some competition for him because we had guys like Graham Glasgow and um, uh, Quinn Miners who can play center. Uh, they have that versatility and they've done it before. But let's have them focus on guard because Miners was solid at guard and so was Glasgow. So let's have them focus on that competition um, and see who wins out there. Also, just a quick side note. Um, there has been a rumor going around. Sorry. Um, I'm going to lower the face cam just real quick. There's been a rumor going around and George Payton said at the end of uh, his press conference, uh, I believe it was today that the Broncos have five picks next in next year's draft. He said, expect them to have a lot more than that um, by the time that next year's draft rolls around. And there's been a lot of discussion that maybe a offensive lineman is on the move. And, you know, could that be, you know, a Natani Moody? Could that be a Graham Glasgow? Could that be a Dalton Reisner? It's all speculation at this point. I'd probably say Dalton Reisner has been the name that comes up the most. So we'll see if that happens. And if that happens, you know, I would probably say um, uh, Glasgow and, and Miners are the starting guards. But that's neither here nor there. Luke Wallenberg's providing a nice competition to Lloyd Cushenberry at 5'10". Um, uh, Wallenberg is 5'10", 192 pounds. And something I want you to keep a, a, a mention of is Wattenberg is 5'10". Russ is 5'11". So this is a shorter center that if he does win the competition, Russ will be able to see over his head easier 
Um, because, you know, obviously Russ is a shorter quarterback, so he needs to sometimes uh, get on his tippy toes to make the throw. So uh, having a shorter center could be beneficial to help him see down the field. I mean, it's not terrible if your center's taller, but it's just something to help Russ out um, and, and just make his life, life a little bit easier. Then in the sixth round, we selected Matt Henningsen, defensive end out of Wisconsin. Now, this was a questionable pick for me because we already drafted uh, a Ruzurike from uh, Iowa State. And to me, Henningsen was more of a seventh round to undrafted free agent pick, in my opinion. We're not grading the picks right now. I'm going to do that uh, in a little bit, uh, maybe maybe tomorrow, maybe in a few days. But to me, Henningsen was a questionable pick. Maybe I need to look more into him as a prospect, but I don't know. We already took... Uh, uh, Ruzurike out of Iowa State. A little bit of a reach, in my opinion. I didn't feel like we needed to go defensive line. Uh, to me, you know, there was a couple guys I, I might have rather had over him. You know, there are a couple guys who went undrafted Rashid Welker, um, a, a couple other tackles that I can't think of their names off the top of my head, uh, that were available right at this point. But there might have been some tackles that I would have liked at this point. Um, some linebackers, uh, but you know, I want to give Matt Henningsen a fair shot. I haven't looked super deep into his tape, so I'm going to do that when I get a fear, uh, uh, a chance here. Uh, may, that might be tomorrow, uh, probably will be tomorrow, but, um, yeah, I, I, I want to give Matt Henningsen a fair shot before I grade him. But to me, this is the most questionable pick that we made in the draft, um, today. Uh, but with the Wisconsin Badgers, he had 38 solo tackles with 54 assist tackles, 92 total tackles and thir with 13 and a half tackles for loss and eight and a half sacks. Uh, and then moving into our last pick of the 2022 NFL draft, the Broncos selected Fayon Hicks, cornerback out of Wisconsin, and he's going to be your, your kind of speed corner. Uh, uh, first things I do want to say is you can never have too much corners. Like it, it is a fact. You can never have too much corners because we saw a couple seasons ago what happens when you are low on corners you know it is just not going to work out super well for you um yeah you want to have as many corners as you can uh, obviously we had a, uh, a fairly speed corner in um uh Kerry Vincent Jr. who we drafted in the seventh round back in 2021 but we traded him to the Eagles uh for a sixth round pick funny enough the sixth round pick we selected Henningsen from so we uh picked up that sixth round pick but we lost Kerry Vincent as a speed corner. And, you know, I know a lot of uh, people are questioning, oh, why do we take corners? Well, dude, we, we need depth at corner. You think about the corners we lost. So Kerry Vincent Jr. at the trade deadline, Kyle Fuller, who, you know, wasn't great, Bryce Callahan, who Mike Ford. Um, so if you think about the current corners uh, on our roster before the draft, it was Patrick Sertan, Ronald Darby, Kwan Williams, Michael Ojemudia and Isang Bassi, which that's five. Sometimes you need four cornerbacks out there, which leaves one depth corner. So picking up Fayon Hicks, picking up someone like a Damari Mathis who can play um, corner or safety, I feel like is solid. So yeah, speed cornerback here could potentially be our future slot cornerback, depending on how Quan Williams works out. I don't hate this pick, you know, more of a developmental guy in Hicks might play on the practice squad his first season. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, and with the Wisconsin Badgers, uh, which were the last two picks, both came from Wisconsin, he had 85 solo tackles with 22 assist tackles for 107 total tackles with 16 passes defended and one interception. Now that we went over the 2022 draft class, let's go ahead and take a look at what our starting offense, defense, and special teams lineups will look like. So here I have the starting offense for the Broncos. Now, of course... I did not count um, all these players into this uh, final 53. There may be more than 53 players total that I'm going to show on offense, defense, and special teams. So obviously, it might not be the final roster, but I'm just kind of giving you a preview of what it could look like. So let's start at center where we have Lloyd Cushenberry. I'm still having him as a starter right now. Uh, as of right now, we haven't seen competition, and you know I'm going to give the edge to the veteran uh, with Luke Wattenberg being the backup there. And then we move to the guards with Graham Glasgow starting at right guard, but 
I want to preface that Quinn Miners played really well last season. So I think Hackett is going to have a competition between Glasgow and Miners, and we will see who starts there. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to give the veteran uh, Graham Glasgow the nod just because he has more experience than Miners. But I would not be surprised if Miners starts at right guard. Uh, then at left guard, I have Dalton Reisner backed up by Natani Moody. Uh, could Dalton Reisner be on the move? Uh, maybe. We'll have to see. Uh, and I also like Natani Moody a lot. You know, the only reason he fell to the sixth round in the 2020 draft was because of his health concerns. If he didn't have injury concerns, he probably would have been second rounder, third rounder. So we're lucky to have a, a really good prospect like Natani Moody uh, on our defense or on our offensive line. Uh, then at left tackle, obviously, it's going to be Garrett Bowles, you know, our best lineman, in my opinion, uh, backed up by Calvin Anderson, uh, who is who will compete for the starting right tackle job. Him, uh, Calvin Anderson, Billy Turner, and Tom Compton all competing for the right tackle spot. However, I have Billy Turner winning the competition, former Bronco, back with the team this year. And then I have Tom Compton, the veteran, backing him up. Now, at quarterback, I mean, it's fairly obvious it's going to be Russell Wilson, you know. <laughs> Who else would it be? Then you have Josh Johnson, who is, to me, he plays a similar style of football like Russell Wilson. So if, you know, hopefully this doesn't happen, but if an injury does happen, you don't have to change up your whole scheme for another quarterback. And Josh Johnson fits that very well. And then Brett Rippon, to me, I really like Brett Rippon. He is a very smart quarterback. Doesn't really have the arm strength, but he is very smart with the football, knows what to do. Uh, knows route combinations, studies film, studies tapes, knows what to do in the playbook. Uh, to me, I probably see him on the practice squad again, but I really do like Brett Rippon as a practice squad quarterback for us. Uh, then let's take a look at let's take a look at tight end first. We have Albert Okwebenam as the starting tight end. Of course, you know was the number two tight end behind Noah Fant, and he really showed flashes on the field. And I think Albert Okwebenam could be special. However, we have seen some injury concern with him. His rookie year, he tore his ACL uh, against the I think it was against the the Patriots, maybe the week after. So we'll see what happens with Okwebenam, but I think he's a very versatile uh, tight end, and we'll see what he can do. Then you have Greg Dulcich as the rookie, who I think will be in two tight end packages with obviously Albert Okwebenam and Dulcich. But, you know, I want to see what happens in camp. That's a battle I'm excited to watch is Dulcich versus Ob uh, Okwebenam. See if, you know, maybe the rookie can beat out Okwebenam. We'll see. But I think Dulcich brings a lot to the table, especially in those two tight end packages. And, you know, they might do what they did with Javante and Melvin Gordon last year, which they might do this year, is swap them out every series. Like maybe give Dulcich a series and give uh, Okwebenam a series. We'll have to see. And then Eric Tomlinson, to me, is going to be that um, uh, blocking tight end used for if, you know, you need help uh, chipping a defensive end or just blocking them entirely, uh, stopping that edge rusher. And, and what I should mention here is Andrew Beck. Obviously, Andrew Beck is our fullback. I forgot to put him in here, unfortunately, but Andrew Beck will, uh, would be under Eric Tomlinson right here. You know what? Let me just add him real quick. Yeah, there we go. So I added Andrew Beck, who is our, going to be our fullback. You know, he can, he doubles as a tight end, but I do see him being our fullback this season. Moving on to the wide receivers. Let's start at the X position with Cortland Sutton. Of course, you know, Cortland Sutton's a deep threat you know you can throw the ball deep he's gonna go up and get it he's gonna high point the catch you know he's gonna he's gonna take on those man-on-man one-on-one -man, uh, -on -one challenges and you know you feel confident throwing the ball up to Cortland Sutton that he's gonna come down with the football just give him that chance you know I have Kendall Hinton as the backup was a uh, honestly a solid receiver last season for us didn't get a whole lot of playing time well actually that's not true he did get some playing time with obviously KJ Hamler going down and Jerry Judy going down uh, early in the season he got some playing time and then Tyree Cleveland a seventh round pick from 2020 a solid depth option can be used as a returner um, if needed to but I have him as the third string X um, let's move on across the field to Tim Patrick who is going to be across from Cortland Sutton kind of does a similar thing to Cortland Sutton you know you like to have those uh, those bigger receivers on the outside someone who you can throw the ball up to so Tim Patrick uh, is going to be the opposite side of Cortland Sun. And then Seth Williams, our sixth round pick from last year out of Auburn, being the backup there. And then in the slot, we have got my favorite player, Jerry Judy. Matter of fact, 
Matter of fact, let me go throw on my jersey right now. Boom. There it is. Jerry Judy. Let me throw this thing on. All right. And then, okay. We have Jerry Judy as the starting slot receiver, who's my favorite player um, on the Broncos. And honestly, uh, probably my favorite player in the NFL. You know, I like Von Miller still, but, you know, that's not the point here. Let's talk about Jerry Judy. If you think Jerry Judy has a drop problem, you did not watch him last season at all. I know he got hurt at the beginning of the season, but he had one drop all season. So let's stop the narrative that Jerry Judy can't catch the football because he can. You know, he can. I know he had that one game against the Chargers his rookie year, but everyone has drops, especially when you're coming in uh, to the NFL. You know, Drew Locke threw the ball fairly hard. Um, and, I mean, Devontae Adams led the league and drops his rookie year, and, and look at him now. So let's not use that that comparison that you or let's not use that excuse that Jerry Judy had drops the ball too much because he does not he had that one game and everyone started to flip on him bro he had one drop last season uh, and then I have KJ Hamler uh, behind him and I do see KJ Hamler as the fourth receiver there so if we if we roll out with four receivers I think it's going to be Sutton Patrick Judy and Hamler um, and yeah that's that's what I would expect and then Montreal Washington behind them both as the slot receiver but like I said I do expect him to be a R or to be our punt and kick returner this year on special teams and then at running back we have Javante Williams at the one I do think it's going to be his year to take over his year to shine I know we signed Melvin Gordon back but with the young buck I do think you know there are going to split carries for sure but I think it's going to be Javante this year and then Melvin Gordon will be the RB2 if you want to call it behind him but I expect them to split carries and and both get a solid workload uh, and then yeah Javante Melvin and then Mike Boone you know I do see him potentially coming in every once in a while but with uh Gordon and Williams you know Gordon or Williams is going to be that power back he's going to run through you not going to be tackled and then uh, Melvin Gordon will not the fastest he is going to be the more of the speedier backs um but also have provides some physicality so Mike Boone, solid depth if one of the RBs goes down, uh, but I do not I expect Mike Boone to be a starting running back and get a lot of touches this season. Alrighty, let's move on to the defense, where this is what our defense looks like. Uh, just to explain, the top row is our defensive line, then the linebackers, then the safeties at the back, and then the corners. And the reason I did this is because, uh, well, it was kind of hard to fit all the names for the safeties. Uh, if I put them where my face cam is right now, um, otherwise it would be hard to read. But let's start off with the defensive line with DJ Jones at defensive tackle. I know a lot of people said when we signed DJ Jones originally that they liked him as a defensive end, but you know I was disagreeing with that. I always thought he should have been a defensive tackle, eating up blocks, um, helping us stop the run, rushing the passer, but mostly helping stop the run, which I feel like we... Uh, need to we needed to improve on just a little bit last season of course you have Mike Purcell and Deshaun Williams backing him up both of whom can help stop the run but not as effective as DJ Jones and then at right end you have Draymond Jones of course third round pick in 2019 uh, so to me Jones will be that Shelby Harris replacement learned under Shelby Harris he can bat the ball down as well he learned that from Shelby Harris then you have Marquis Spencer behind him our seventh round pick from last year, someone who maybe can learn from Draymond Jones. And then I have Matt Henningsen, uh, our sixth round pick this year out of Wisconsin behind both of them. And then at left end, I have McTelvin Aguim starting third round pick in 2020. So I'm giving him the nod. But then I have Ioima uh, uh, Aruzarike as the backup there competing for the starting spot. To me, you know, I like McTubbin Aguim. I want him to get a fair shot because, you know, you had Shelby Harris, so he never really got his opportunities on the field, and I want him to show me what he can do. But I feel like, you know, no fault to his own, he's going to be on a fairly short leash, and, you know, if he doesn't perform uh, as expected right away, I think, you know, they might throw, uh, throw Uru Zurique. <laughs> it's going to be hard. It's going to be a learning curve saying his name. I think they're going to throw uh, him in and, so it, it's just unfortunate for him, but I'm hoping to see improvement from Aguim. And then I have Jonathan Harris being the third string behind him. 
Um, let's move on to middle linebackers where the starting two middle linebackers for our three, four defense are going to be Alex Singleton and Josie Jewell. Alex Singleton coming over from the Eagles, I thought was a very solid signing. I did expect us to add a linebacker to this group in the draft class. Unfortunately, we did not, uh, but I do like the Alex Singleton signing. And then Josie Jewell, I like the re-signing. I know a lot of Broncos fans say they don't like Josie Jewell, but come on, man. Come on. I think Josie Jewell is a really good player, but you're thinking, I think most Broncos fans are thinking of him in the wrong aspect. Josie Jewell's role is not meant to cover receivers. I mean, let's be, let's face it. He can't cover that well. I'm hoping he can prove on that, but that's not his area of expertise. What he does do well is he's a hard hitting linebacker. Who's not afraid to hit and he's going to go up and make the tackle. I mean, look at week one in 2020. He put Derrick Henry on his butt just absolutely knocked him down. To me, Josie Jewell, this was an excellent re-signing to help support the running game from the linebacker position. Then you have Jonas Griffith, who is a solid special teamer, who we traded a fifth-round pick for to the 49ers, who solid, solid pick here. And then, uh, you know, I think when he came on in relief last season, he was he was solid. He was very, very solid. You know, we had all of our linebackers out, so Griffith was... An absolute re-signing. I believe he was a, a priority free agent or an exclusive rights free agent for the Broncos. So, so yeah. Then we have Baron Browning backing up Josie Jewell. Now, Baron Browning is very raw as well. Uh, he he isn't the best in coverage, kind of like uh, Jewell. But what he does do well is rushing the passer. So, I believe they want to get some snaps at, with Browning at edge rusher and see what he can do off the edge. Maybe... They make the switch and he becomes one of our edge rushers. Maybe, I don't know, maybe being behind Malik Reed, in front of Malik Reed. We'll see. Uh, but we'll. Uh, I believe they said they're going to try it out, but they most likely will still use him as an inside linebacker. Then you got Barrington Wade and Justin Sternad. And Sternad was the fifth round pick in 2020 and just, you know, hasn't really, really proved himself. So I'm hoping maybe he can prove himself this season. Uh, then moving on to the edge, we have Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory was an excellent signing. Very raw, has a lot of potential, needs to get his sack numbers up and hopefully get a little bit more production. But I think this was a great signing by the Broncos this offseason. Yeah, I do believe that Randy Gregory will make an impact for us. Uh, you know, he played defensive end for the Cowboys because they run a 4-3. But I think his transition to the uh, fourth uh, or three, four playing outside linebacker. I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. Um, then backing up Randy Gregory, I have Malik Reed, who was our starter last year. And, you know, he wasn't terrible being a starter, but I personally thought that Malik Reed was better in rotation. You know, when we had Vaughn Miller, Bradley Chubb, or Vaughn Miller, uh, Shaq Barrett, Bradley Chubb, uh, I don't think we actually, I don't know if, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember, was Shaq Barry and Bradley Chubb on a team? I, I don't, maybe one year, but I don't think so. Uh, but I like him in rotation as that kind of third rotational edge. And that's what Nick Benito will play as well, that third rotational edge. Uh, I don't think he starts right away. He could, you know, barring any injuries. Uh, if there's an injury, he, he might start. But I want him to come off and rotation, you know, not take the whole load. But eventually, I I would like to see him as a starter at some point in his career, whether that be uh, next year in a few years. But we will see from there. Uh, Aaron Patrick behind Randy Gravery as well. It is what it is. Jonathan Cooper, who was a very solid seventh round pick, one of the better seventh round picks from last year's draft, um, making his way behind Benito, and then Andre Mentz, who was a very solid undrafted free agent, in my opinion, last season out of Vanderbilt. Then moving on to safeties, we got a solid safety room this season. We have Justin Simmons starting at free safety, then uh, newly signed J.R. Reed behind Justin Simmons, and then Jamar Johnson behind him. I would like to see some more Jamar Johnson, though. Fifth-round pick last season was a healthy scratch for a majority of the game, so we'll see if they find a role for him. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I have Caden Stearns at the starting strong safety. I think Stearns proved he can be our starting strong safety. And while we did sign Kareem Jackson back, and I know he wants to still be the starter based on his interviews, from what I'm hearing from Benjamin Albright is that 
Kareem Jackson is going to play more of that rotational kind of nickel dime type of uh, package be that veteran leadership we'll see he could definitely still start at strong safety but in my my eyes I feel like it might be time to start Caden Stearns who played really well when given the opportunities last season then I have DeLorean Turner yell behind them both learning from Kareem Jackson in his first season developing Maybe sees the field a little bit, but I don't know how often he'll see the field. And then P.J. Locke, I feel like, is the odd man out here. Uh, you know, went from being one of our <laughs> one of our, sa- our safeties last season behind Simmons and Stearns and Jackson to being really the outcast and at, towards the bottom of the je- depth chart. And finally, moving on to corners. I love this cornerback group. Patrick Sertan. As the number one corner, I mean, I feel like that's obvious. Like, come on. Damari Mathis, I really like behind Patrick Sertan, a hard-hitting physical corner. To me, you know, yeah, he, he ain't afraid to hit. He ain't afraid to hit. I would love to see him behind Patrick Sertan. Two young guys. Isang Bassey uh, as a third stringer. I don't know how much a time he'll get. And then Fayon Hicks as well. Maybe more of an on-the-practice field type of guy, uh, depth guy if needed. Uh, on the opposite side, you have Ronald Darby. Two years left on his contract that we signed him to last offseason. Just a solid veteran who is going to provide that veteran leadership. Still, maybe for Patrick Sertan still, he's still young, but I still like feel like Sertan has got the leadership and he can also help out in that way. But guy, for guys like Damari Mathis, Fan Hicks, Isang Bassi even, you know, even guys like Michael Oshimudia. Uh Then we have Quan Williams, who will be the starting slot corner after losing Bryce Callahan to free agency, but Callahan was also like 30, so I kind of expected it to happen as well. Michael Ojemudi, I do expect to be the number four corner behind Ronald Darby. Maybe he's the number three ahead of Damari Mathis. We'll have to see this upcoming offseason, but he played really solid the last game of the season, last home game. I really liked what I saw from Michael Ojemudi, and I think he can can be very solid. You know, he missed most of the season, but in that game, he he proved himself and he played really well. And then we have newly assigned to Bless and Austin. Bless Austin signed with the Broncos. Will he make the squad out of training camp? Only time will tell. And then finally, let's move on to the special teams where we have Brandon McManus as the kicker. I mean, obviously. McManus, to me, is one of the most reliable field goal kickers in the league. Yeah, I love McManus. I think he's solid. I'm glad we don't have to worry about kicker. Sam Martin will be our starting punter. I'm I'm fine with Sam Martin. I know y- y'all saw me say I wanted Daniel Ariza, but I'm fine with Sam Martin. I think he's a very solid punter. You know, definitely an upgrade from Colby Wadman. You know, I know Riley Dixon is solid now with the Giants, but when he was with us, Riley Dixon was not great with us. Uh, Jacob Bob and Moyer as the long snapper. I bet a lot of you didn't know who the Broncos long snapper was, but hey, I'm just I'm just a super fan, so of course I know who our long snapper is. And then I have Montreal Washington, a fifth round rookie, being the punt and kick returner. Well, that's it for this Broncos 2022 draft class recap. Let me know what your thoughts are of the Broncos draft class in the comments below. I'll be giving my grades on these players here within the next couple days. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with another video very, very soon.